We're gonna take back roads and then we're gonna cut over. It's not even spinning the alternator. The belt's not even tight on it. We've got a challenge. I've got to get that planter stuck back there um, about 90 miles north. I gotta pull it with a pickup truck, which this thing gets pretty heavy. Um, but we've done it before. We pulled it like we pulled it like 150 miles, honestly, when I first bought it. So we should be fine. I've got to move all these headers and stuff out of the way. Combine's not here. The tractor's not here. A bunch of trailers are not here. So that's why the shed looks super empty. But uh, we're gonna take the planter and like some tillage equipment up north to the north farms because by in about a month from now, a majority of the acres will be up there, and that's that's where we're gonna be long term and stuff. So everything will eventually go up there. We're just gonna start with the planter first because I need to first start working on that. So that is the plan. Okay, let's see if we can get the 420 started. I didn't plug her in at all. It's like 50 degrees. Um, it should start right up, but this thing, this thing always has rough mornings. It, it takes a little bit to get out of bed. So let's see if we can get her. Just gonna let her warm up outside before I smoke this whole place out. I'm hoping I can pull that bean head straight out that door, but it's gonna be a tight fit to get it out right there. It'll be close, but we should be good. Kind of hoping I can just pull these two wagons ahead, be able to get the pickup truck in here. The 4020 hitch is too low to get to the planter. I know it. If you have that thing too low, that jack stand doesn't work right. So I think I'm just going to try and hook up the pickup to it. We're just going to try and roll these by hand. And I'm just going to push them ahead, get a little momentum, and then start turning. Oh boy, I remember how wide this thing is. Oh, okay, let's see what we're dealing with back here. We've got a stop there. We don't have a hydraulic stop there. I think I have a couple more stops that should work for that. I think I have two more, because I'd like to get a hydraulic stop on every rear wheel there, in case those, those hydraulics are probably gonna slowly leak down. And then that way we got four different stops and four different wheels. So I think I have some more here. Here we go. I don't know if these are gonna work, but we're gonna try them. Okay, I got this thing on and she's heavy. Um, I must have parked the mulch finisher so close that I can't get the planter out. We have a flat tire on the right side, so I'm hoping by pumping this up, the flat tire on the right side, we should be able to clear one of those sweeps on there because we're hitting the vacuum on one of those sweeps. So it's currently showing eight PSI. We'll go 30. I think these are supposed to be at like 45, but we'll start at 30. Change of plans, I, I ran out of time yesterday. Um, I was messing around too much, sun was going down. I brought home some tools in the enclosed trailer because that was plan B, that worked out good. Um, that way we have all today in case we have issues on the road pulling this thing. Today's a Saturday, hopefully the roads aren't as busy. So I brought Spencer with me. Now this guy, he has two knee surgeries coming up. He just did one, he's got a major one coming up. So he's gonna be gone a lot of the early summer. Yeah. So I'm trying, I have one knee surgery I did yesterday and that's, I can walk around, I crutch around a little bit and I'll be good in two weeks. And I'm trying to time it. Six weeks is the earliest I can do the next one. The knee, the knee surgery after that will be like an ACL. It'll, be, it'll take like nine months or a year to recover. 
until I should be able to heal from this little one, be good during the spring, and then get the next one, the big one, right after spring work, and then go all summer, and then be good enough to limp around in the fall. So, because it's a year long thing, there's no point in waiting in winter, because then you won't be ready by the spring, so. Um, it's something that happened when I was like 15, 16, 17, football, played rugby, wrestled, and essentially a part of my bone got hit and then it didn't heal right when I was that young. And I never got an MRI. I always just thought it was nothing. So then I finally got an MRI and that's kind of where I'm at. So I have to do surgery to fix it. Otherwise I'll need a knee replacement in 10 years when I'm 30, which then I'll be 50 and need another one. Then I'll be 60 and need a third one. So should work out good. Luckily we don't farm that many acres. So I can handle everything myself pretty easily. Yeah, see this pin? Comes out easier to stick it. No, this, this jack, this jack has a ways to go, too. Okay, Smith is working, just putting some air in the tires real quick, making sure they're all good. I'm gonna get the 420 fired up and move uh, all the headers back in there, and then we should be good to go. Okay, we've got like 90 miles to go with this thing. We should be good. We're gonna take back roads and then we're gonna cut over on like a four lane highway. And you wouldn't think it, but the highways, like the four lane highway actually ends up working better than back roads just cause you can take up the second lane and cars can go around you. Works pretty good, it's a lot safer. So we'll see how she goes. We're pulling her. Works pretty good. Cars can just pass on the left and just take them nice and easy, doing like 45, 50. Okay, new day now. This is probably like the fifth or sixth day I've recorded for this video, but uh, we gotta change oil in the 8110 and then fuel filters also in the 8110. I should have all the parts, we should be good. Um, so we're gonna get this thing serviced and then next thing after that, We'll see if we get to today is start messing with the planner and making sure that's all in spec. I apologize guys, the lighting is probably horrible. Oh, that is coming fast. That is going fast. Go off. Okay, I should have my filter. I need to order a part for this side panel. There's this little lever here that uh, usually helps you get this side panel off, and there's a piece that fell off up here. I think I can still get the side panel off, but most likely it fell off when we were doing the tractor hopping. That's on me, that's on me, mistake on me. Usually you're supposed to be able to pull this lever and then grab this handle off with the other hand, but I need two hands right now to be able to get this lever on. Okay, Spence is actually pretty close, so he's gonna give me a hand on this real quick. I've got this oil funnel that was homemade by one of the John Deere mechanics at my local John Deere dealership, and the parts guy was selling these. He sold like 20 of them, and uh, I forgot what it was exactly, but it's like kind of a homemade thing. But it's got a lot of like rough material on the inside, so I wanna clean it out, run some used oil through it, before we end up running some uh, new oil through this. It's got a lot of flaky material on the inside, so I wanna get it all cleaned out here. That's nice, and then you just let it sit there for now, for, while you're changing everything else. You haven't pulled the old filter off? No, because I'm. that's what I'm meeting you for. One. Go. There you go. You're good. Now you slide back. 
There we go. Okay, we got it ready to go now. Let's see how hard this thing starts. See how good a job we did bleeding the system. Okay, so Parker helped us in the fall and he came down here for two days to help Spencer do some power washing of some fences and clean. He actually has a power washing business here and he pulled in right when I was about to start power washing this thing. So what better perfect timing than to have yep, you wash yep, this? Yep. Yep, uh, Spencer had me working a little bit uh, today, uh, had me come down here for a few days, gonna wash some sheds and stuff, and uh, I was lucky enough that Grant had the tractor pulled out here. So we're uh, gonna wash a nice John Deere today, so should be fun, get a nice uh, rinse, soap done, and then uh, clean her off for him, so. So he actually does this for a living. He started his own company, it's pretty cool, kind of entre entrepreneurial in that way. And so um, he does like a lot of jobs, like all summer long, so. This should be a walk in the park for him. He's got like all sorts of tank mixes. Yeah, it's a, it's a full uh, truck bed skid, they call it. Uh, so on here I have a, a 3500 PSI uh, Honda uh, pressure washer, uh, as well as a soft wash system. So that's for washing homes, exteriors, uh, buildings, anything of that sort. So I do both residential and commercial properties. But uh, I got soap on here as well as it mixes with bleach. So it's a whole uh, mixing system. That you see here kind of i can blend all the all the water from water to soap to chemicals so i can mix the ratios or whatnot and uh, uh not kill anything or damage anything uh while i'm doing it so just don't just don't rip those stickers off yeah that's the only thing don't yeah. rip the stickers I'll off sure i'll make sure just rip them right off of it no i'm kidding oh there you go that's good enough Oh, yeah. I was just trying to wet it down before I put the soap on it and then I do the pressure after the soap. So you just got a remote that will literally turn on the soap on that gun. With the light, turn it on, the light turns on, and then I'll, it should take a minute to soak through the line and then once it comes out I'll spray. We're using some Andy Clean Performance Soap. If you guys don't know, he started it because he always had his equipment super clean. He was like, hey, I want to start a soap. Um, and there's this hashtag going around Twitter of Andy Clean. Is my tractor Andy Clean? So that's where he kind of started the company from, uh, which is a pretty cool story. So we're using some of that. You can get it at uh, John Deere and I think maybe at some Case H dealerships too. Don't quote me on it though, but I know for sure John Deere. We had to revert to the old method. We had some complications over there. We're getting it fixed though. So for now, we're using the uh, regular container. We've got to tow that mulch finisher today. That's my task and it's gonna be kind of a hard task because that mulch finisher is pretty darn heavy. But um, me and Spencer, like I said, Guys, this shed is getting sold and uh, my original farms are getting sold and I'm trading ground. So that means all this stuff in the shed has to get moved at some point. Uh, I've got somebody that's, it's not in writing yet, but it's super interesting once the shed, once the farm, and we're gonna put it in writing, I think next week, uh, which means I gotta get started getting this moved and get to my fields up, uh, up north of here. So that's the plan. So while I'm editing it, this farm is now sale pending. And it's got the machine shed with it, the 60 by 120, and it's got 88 acres. And so it's going to be tough to let go, but um, I think it's going to work out good for the new buyer. New buyer really won the machine shed, and um, it's going to work out good. But technically, it's not closed yet, but I want to get everything moved out of the machine shed so that by closing day, the machine shed's all cleaned out, and it's all the new owners. <laughs> There was such thing as Farmer Olympics. I think this would be probably one of the things that's pushing these wagons around. You get a little momentum to get them started. And then from there, they're kind of tough to stop. And if you slip on like oil right there, the wagon's probably gonna run you over. 
Okay, let's see if we can make some magic happen here. I don't know if this is gonna work, guys. This is what we need right here. Oh, that's, that's way too small a pin. That is, this might be perfect. I'm guessing this is gonna be perfect. I do wanna try and grease the wheel bearings. Let's see if they take. Tuck. We are cruising, keeping her under 25 and uh, got the hazards on and we should be good. This road is super nice for hauling equipment. Oh, it's so wide. You can just let the implement sit on the tires, sit on the edge. No oncoming traffic's totally good. Works great. Okay, guys, we made her. We made her. We got her here. Spencer was my, what do you call the person that goes in front? Uh, scout? No. Pilot car, pilot car. There we go, there we go. So Spencer was the pilot car. We're getting her unhooked. Okay, so I gotta show you guys this machine shed here. Um, it's not a Quonset, but it feels like a Quonset. It's like from the 70s and I didn't buy it. A neighbor has this and had some space available. So he's gonna let us use it. It's super generous of him to let us use it like this. Um, it's gonna work super good. I think it's 40 wide by 70 long. And this completely just like saves our butts because otherwise, we probably end up storing like a lot of the machinery outside or about 30 miles away from here, 30, 30 miles away from our farms. I have a place that we could use probably, but it had been like tight and stuff. This is seven miles away. So it's like, you know, you can park the tractor here and you're spraying or you're planting. You can park the tractor here and over the summer, it just works super handy. So we're going to use this. Um, this is, I don't know. I'm just super pumped to have a place because otherwise I was going to be kind of in a panic over the next year to try and buy an 80 on a paved road and then get a machine shed built super quick and so this makes you have a little more time uh to think about to think about where that machine shed's going to go or or where that you know where that shop's going to go basically so um yeah this is going to be super awesome i got the whipple seed there uh unload that yesterday this grain trailer is not ours this is our neighbors um so he's just leaving it here of course um and then we got like a a bench over there there's an overhead door here too um i can't fit the combine in here so i'm thinking for the combine i'm going to try and talk to van wall and see if i can just keep a spot there under storage and just rent that and then come september i'll probably grab that and then park the combine outside or or something like that but the finisher we want to we want to save as much space as possible so for now we're parking the finisher inside and then i think most likely we'll end up once we're done using it uh, probably park that at like Spencer's farm in the summer because there's a grass spot where we can park stuff. It'll probably end up sitting outside uh, just because we want to be efficient with this space as efficient as possible. So there's an awesome be old bench here with stuff from the like 80s or 90s still that hasn't been touched. He said there's a jug of paint that's like 30 years old. Yeah. And you'd see it all separate the liquids. I'm 25 years old and I've never seen a bottle like this. Ever. I don't even know what it is. Is that paint? Is that the paint? Yeah. So you can see it separates like, and then that's like clear color. Paint jumps through that pretty quick, but. And like, then it's. Like, like a cord like this. You haven't seen a cord like that. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like look, you can see the wires right there. Oh, anyway. Whoa. And then it's got a, uh, it's got a vice too, which is super handy. We always had a shaky wooden table. This is gonna be nice to have. This is pretty sturdy. So I've been looking for a sprayer and uh, my neighbor who's, who's this is, he upgraded to a 120 foot sprayer. This is a 90 foot and this is like the exact model I was looking for. Um, 90 foot pull type sprayer. It's got an 1800 gallon tank on it. So he was gonna sell this and I was like, hey, I'd, I'd, I'd buy it. So um, I'm 
pretty much gonna buy it from them. I'm just gonna run it one time for uh, pre-merge, test it out, make sure everything works good on our acres with it, 90 foot, and then I'll probably purchase it um, purchase it right after. So, so it does have a big tank on it. It's an 1800 gallon tank, which we probably won't need that often. And it's got 90 foot booms with three section shutoff. So um, it doesn't have like a green star rate controller. That's one thing I was thinking about adding to it. Um, let me know your guys' opinion. If you guys run like uh, equipment, I'm just like, well, I'm running green star on the tractors. So I might as well run a green star rate controller on it. Keep everything simple. Um, otherwise it just runs off of the, um, not ag leader, the Raven, Raven 440 or Raven 450, which we use for anhydrous. So, uh, yeah, at least we don't have to pull this equipment like 90 miles, you know, like we're pulling all the other equipment. So it's just, it's here, it's ready to go. So, um, once temps get warmer, we'll test this out, make, learn how to use it actually, spray some water through it, mess around it with that. So. Fuck. Right. Right man, fuck. I'll switch it. Go and grab this. Grabbing. So I'm sure you guys remember Buck. He's always here in the fall and spring. I'm not, I'm not dead. I didn't, I don't hate him. I didn't leave him. I didn't divorce him. I didn't abandon him. I just did my own thing. Yeah. So Buck, uh, Buck records farm sim videos with me and recently he started going on his own more. And so I've just been with another guy recording farm sim videos. So he, uh, he still comes out in the fall and spring and helps us with, you know, real life farm and stuff like that. So he's from Nebraska though. So it's like a three hour drive for him, right Buck? Yeah. Four, three or four. Do you guys get the military truck started? No, but I think I found out your alternator problem. Oh, on the military truck? Yeah. You're fixing everything for it's us. It's not even spinning the alternator. The belt's <laughs> not even tight on it. Oh, really? <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Come on, respect me. the mulch finisher hooked up back here um, we're gonna use this and I think Spencer's gonna try and plant some alfalfa here probably in a week on some of his rougher like tougher to farm acres where it's real narrow it's tough like getting a sprayer back there or getting the planter back there and he likes growing alfalfa and hay so I think he's gonna take like 12 acres probably put into alfalfa here and just try it out so what we're gonna do is get, uh, borrow a chisel from our neighbor and chisel it. We dissed it last fall, we're gonna chisel it here. Um, and then we'll probably work it down with the mulch finisher eventually. We got the mulch finisher unhooked. And then now we're gonna go just uh, grab a chisel from a neighbor real quick. So we're in the uh, the 80 acre farm I bought. And this spot down here is some Okoboji soil. It's really heavy stuff. It always, if you get a big rain, this always ponds out. And so there's some really weird inlet stuff going on here with a six inch inlet with this as the top of it. So basically when you got a pond, I bet your corn stalks just covered this thing. This isn't gonna solve our problems, but there's some weird stuff going on. So we're gonna put a proper inlet here, down here. So that way we don't have any issues with dirt going down into the tile system or even just corn stalks covering this little cage here that's right at ground level. So. We're uh, digging her out, and then we're gonna put a six inch. I wish I had an eight inch. We're just gonna throw a six inch in there for now. Plan is, if this main tile line works, is to retile it, retile it this fall. So this is just get, gonna get us by for one year. Do it proper, and then come back and do an actual true tile job across here. So that's the plan. We found the uh, six inch here, and uh, 
we're gonna throw a uh, inlet in quick. We rented this machine, it's Bobcat E50, just for the day or two, for however long we need it. And then I get to sit in here, and those guys dig, because I got a bad knee for a little bit, so. It's nice, it's got a 30 inch smooth bucket, so that's, you don't want teeth, and then wider the better, because Grant, uh, so Grant doesn't have to suck in when he gets in the trench. There's clay, just be a little more careful because I think we'll probably just make the connection right here and leave a little plastic. What? So, yeah, eventually we'll just rip out this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, yep. Soil reminds me exactly of my crick bottom farm. It's so thick and mucky, uh, it just doesn't drain at all. This is what it looked like before you put it in all that pattern tile, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it still technically is, but it's not nearly as bad. Is that the tile into the plastic right there? Yeah. Put my bucket right on it. Yeah. All the way in? You could probably. There you go. Good. Good. Does that work? Yep. Okay. Yeah, um, probably back back with combine anyway. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be a little short, but it'll... Now we're just backfilling it by hand with really nice soil that's nice and loose because you don't want any big chunks or rocks next to it. Okay, this inlet's done. Should be good to go. Okay, I've got Buck on the uh, 4020. And we're gonna go see if we can get that hooked up to our disc we bought. Seat belt, seat belt time. But we're gonna go see if, uh, if that 420 can just lightly pull the disc a little bit. The corn head doesn't do the best job chopping up the stock, so it'd be good to hit it once lightly with the disc, chop them up a little more, and then hit it with the chisel on the ground that's going to alfalfa. So we wanna get it, everything sized real good and then worked, uh, so that way we don't have any as much residue coming into alfalfa here. Just gonna start the tractor quick and get her warmed up. Okay, I got the disc all set for Buck here. So Buck's going, I told him just kind of keep it slow. All we're trying to do is chop up these stocks a little bit. Um, that way it works through the chisel, we can make this blacker. So it's working good. That's a heavy, that's a heavy disc, or that's a, uh, that's a 21 or 24 foot disc though. So it's a little too much for the 4020. So I got to kind of keep her slow. Doing a pretty nice job. So we got buck disking, and then uh, we're gonna chisel with 8110, try and turn this as black as possible going to alfalfa. Remember your diff lock is uh, yeah. on at the end. Yeah, you're pretty deep. So where's it at right there? Or, yeah, you had to get over a hump? Yeah, you have to kind of go over the hump to get over it, I think. Hit your diff lock. Tap it. There you go. Just jump on any row. Yeah, you could probably, I wonder what happens if you go faster. Do I shift or wait? Oh, I'd shift. There we go. Okay, we got five acres all dissed. I measured the bridge. I think Buck can fit across with it unfolded. 
reason is we got adapters so we only have two adapters for this thing and it should fit fine oh yeah you'll be good hey right down the center over this way oh wait i just don't see the back one. Oh yeah you might not fit I just don't see back her back her up yeah Messy job. You gotta take off these adapters. This one's not one to come off. What you got? No, Every time, no, look at, put it on the thing and watch the thing drop. Oh, is it dropping? Yes. I said, just set it on the ground. Drop her, uh, drop her down. Let's go, Buck. Ah, oh, that is a mess. Trying to get those hydraulic tips on and off. I did it, and then I put the adapter right back on the same hydraulic lines. Just stupid, but uh, we're good now. Well, those guys are disc and working ground. I'm gonna take the mini X. We only got this for a day. Let's get to it. Let's see what we got here. This is pretty, it's a pretty shallow tile right here. It's really not too deep at all. Missed it. It's starting to suck right there. And there's a, probably like a three foot hole. I'm guessing if I left it by the summer, it'd be it'd take a lot more dirt with it, but you can tell it's starting to take dirt with it, which means the tile must be broken somewhere over there, I'm guessing. the tile i didn't hit any of it but 
you can see we got water here and it seems like it's taking on the other end which means uh which means it's good check this out though see this corn well this is kernels that was probably left over from my bad combine but this corn means and right here there was a pile of corn it must be sucking right there that's kind of a small crack for tile to be sucking i feel like but we got also got an issue here there's tile down here water goes this way water's supposed to go this way and there's tile down here that i can't see and we got tile up here which means something's messed up down here tile can't water can't run uphill that quick so it's like it's got tile on a slant right now so it seems like we got a suck hole here but i think we got something else going on over here that we'll have to check out i'm gonna take a walk down here to the creek and see if i can see the outlet and see if we can see water flowing out the outlet um, just to make sure everything's working there we pulled three clays out pulled them both out then put two ends on an eight inch plastic taped them together and we think two Two of those three that we pulled out were kind of damaged, sunken, not feeding right. And then Grant's just putting a little protector on the connections. I don't know. Might as well throw it on while it's here and we'll backfill it. And I think this is more like we're in the P-trap of this tile system where there's always sitting water, whether it's dry or wet. But then when it rains, it flows. I don't know. Grant's going to backfill it and we'll be good. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Sorry for no outro, but I should be planting if weather allows any time in the next week or two. So hopefully can get rolling on some plants.